Hey guys, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from The Shrinking Pastor at YouTube.com. And together, the three of us, Things are getting weird. him and me and you, <laughs> we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Good morning and good morning, boys. Good morning, Homer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, at this very moment, uh, I'm I'm wrapping uh, up. Let's see, this is Wednesday morning. Oh no, you know what? Uh, this very moment, I'm getting on an airplane and heading to Germany, which explains why I will not be at the Chicago Land Pipe Show this weekend. Boy just started a job recently, which is uh, the reason why he will not be at the Chicago Land Pipe Show. But we thought as a way of not only supporting those of you who are going and supporting the, the efforts of the show, but also as a way of uh, just kind of being involved in this and in what little way we can, we thought we would talk about our experiences with pipe shows, uh, give you a little bit of an idea if it's your first time of what you might expect, and, and also maybe, maybe rant a little bit about a show and an experience that drove us a little bit nuts. All right? But first, we are about to light up L.J. Peretti Thanksgiving Day. I picked this up while I was in Boston back in December, and it's a wee bit dry. Um, I probably should have transferred this into something else because it's a simple plastic bag that gets folded over and taped. It's no Ziploc or anything. and it, It's known for its ability to keep in moisture. What's that? Folded bag. A folded over plastic hey, bag whoa. and a piece of tape. Who's that? Oh, I thought that was mine. Nope. Excuse me. Nope. This is mine. All right. So well, that's being fancy. Look at me being super fancy today. Now the reason why you're not wit witnessing us loading our tobacco is because uh, this is take number three. All my fault. I will admit. It is his fault. I'll admit too. I, I made the mistake of wanting, as we as I lit up, wanting to see what was in this tobacco, and then stopping and trying to pull it up on my phone. And if you've watched any of our videos before, you know that here in my shop, I don't get nothing on my phone, and uh, that put Boy in a bad position of having to fill the dead air, and it just was not pretty. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll skip all that. Except for to tell you about it. Come on. <laughs> Maybe it'll make its way into the blooper reel if we ever have one of those. Yeah. Hey, thank you for subscribing, by the way. We, we not long ago surpassed 800 subscribers, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool landmark. It's very cool. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for watching and commenting and continuing to do all of those things, even though we're just two goofballs. You know, we check Google Analytics from time to time. Obviously, uh, based on the length of our videos, we don't uh, allow analytics to drive us because they would tell us that uh, you give up on us after about eight to ten minutes. But that's okay. <laughs> I do too. That, the I, fact I, that you spend eight minutes with us is, is surprising. After eight minutes, I totally <laughs> am phoning it in. But if you don't already know this, down in the doobly doo, down in the description, we try mm. to put something that we call shop notes, which are links to various topics within the video, so that. If you're going to have to bail on us, we understand. But take a look in that list and see if there's any <clears throat> topics that are coming up that you can just fast forward to. It also contains links to outside things. If we talk about a product or if we're talking about, I don't know, it's, uh, like a few weeks ago or a week ago or sometime recently, we talked about vaping and some of the, the laws that might be affecting vapors and uh, pipe smokers and put links to relevant information there as well now i'm smoking this in <coughs> my um morgan nose warmer that i like to call the 320 of the corn cob world and boy happens to be smoking his in a uh, savinelli 320 savinelli nose warmer <laughs> what i like to call the savinelli of the 320 world <laughs> <laughs> You heard me. It's the Morgan nose warmer of the uh, Briar world. All right, so uh, on to pipe shows. Um, we had kind of a frustrating experience this afternoon um, as we were talking about well, what, what are we going to talk about as we film our video. 
Um, and boy said, well, let's, you know, let's talk about shows. And I said, Hey, that's a good point because the, uh, triangle area pipe show or taps as it's known will be uh, coming up soon in Raleigh. And so as we're talking, he pulls out his phone and he says, uh, it's happening today. What do you mean it's happening today? Now we've been to that show three times. We were there last year. When we go there, we register, we give them our name and our address and our email address. The first time we went, we met Basil. Uh, that wasn't the first time. Second time we went. Second time. First time oh, we sorry, went first, at, It was a hotel. sketchy, it was no good. A hotel where you can't smoke, not great for a pipe show. <laughs> Second time we went, we met Basil, made this pipe. Um, and has metal Meadows. Has entered the Cobb Foolery competition. Mm-hmm. Now it's a well-established show. And <coughs> it's a show that's that's. This is their 18th annual year. It, it's a show that is put on by a a pipe collectors club. So the vibe at that show is different than the vibe in Nashville, different than the vibe in Chicago. Now Chicago is also a club of pipe collectors, but a much larger and I would say much better established club but the very fact that uh they didn't contact us to let us know it was coming is mind-blowing to me and every year we've gone we've thought to ourselves this thing is dying it's dying it uh, there's, there's so, so much more that they could be doing it, they are right there in raleigh and within how far of nc state oh right around the corner a, a mile two miles and, and, how many, and how many other schools are yeah. there? And, and it takes place at the state fairgrounds. And it is, it's a research triangle as well. So there's a lot of young, educated people that... Uh, hipsters. Men, hi, I, I, did, I was trying not to say hipsters. I can say it because I'm still mostly young. But, but they hipsters. are. And, and they're cool people. The very kind of people that we met in Nashville are in that area. And yet they weren't at the show. And, and, and each year that we've been there, we've seen a very small number, like about four of these young people who show up and they're kind of trepidatious about walking up. And, and we've always made a point of kind of jumping up, even though we're not members of the club um, and, and, and we're not in any way associated with that. But yeah. we just want these guys to feel welcome, especially if they're not smokers, if they're not carrying bags of tobacco uh, or pipes with them. Um, and yet we notice that while they're not made to feel, or they're not unwelcome, they're not made to feel welcome, right? And so to me, it's such a missed opportunity. We also noticed there was no social media. There was no Instagram post except for ours. No one was tweeting Mm -hmm. on behalf of the club. And part of the reason is the club, I don't know what their average age is. It's it's my age and older. Uh, And so those folks, by and large, are not all that uh, social media uh, conscious even let alone active they really have to do something to get some some fresh blood in that club or it's going to go away yeah right now let's then go to chicago chicago was dramatically different even though i think at its foundation you've got uh you know some mature experienced pipe smokers that are putting this event on um there on display is not just and what we had at taps was some small Tobacconists like um, Cornell and Deal, since that they're a North Carolina company, they were there, um, and a few a few carvers, uh, importers, I should say, mostly mm-hmm. importers, selling their wares. Um, mm-hmm. It was in in Nashville, just the opposite. You had nothing but a bunch of artisan carvers and a bunch of young people, many of which were tatted and mm-hmm. pierced and and uh, long hair and people that might even have been chased away from the right. Taps show. The Taps show feels like the kind of pipe it's show that, that my old Southern Baptist church would have had right. if they would have allowed smoking. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> very stuffy. It's uh, you know, what what you get are a lot of the um, big, I don't know, large manufactured pipes. Um, you know, you, you would find you would find a table of Savinelli's um, next to a table of 
whatever name, big pipe brand um, next to a table, big pipe brand and and it but it's all very it's all very impersonal um it's kind of i don't know now suited up we, sort of i think okay we're we're not doing total justice to this because we did meet a few vendors that were nice and 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 would yeah, share with us right. the guy the guys at cornell yeah. and deal are always happy guys and yeah. gal always healthy uh, helpful. helpful um and the people that show up for the event they go in, they walk through, and then they head outside, sit at the picnic tables, and smoke. We loved hanging out with those guys. Oh, yeah. Just like in Chicago. For me, the real value was out in the smoking tent, hanging out with our, with our <clears throat> friends from primarily YouTube. So what did, what did Chicago do? What were some of the things that they did differently uh, that, that were more positive? And some of the things that were a, a little bit still... Not negative, but a little bit awkward. All right, so the very first night after uh, when you arrive, if you arrive prior to the event that begins on Saturday, um, they they host an informal, what do they even call that? It's a it's a crawl or a, what do they call that? Which part? The, ho- the hotel where the folks will set up uh, things in their rooms. Before that even. Oh. Before that even. Okay, why don't you what tell you? me what you're thinking? I, well, I don't, I have no, I'm not reading your mind well today. I mean, I was going to say that the very first thing that happened when we got there, very first thing is they were having a a competition um, where they had a in bunch of in the tent mm-hmm. had a bunch of different tobaccos, and you were trying to was you, were you ranking them, or I think you were trying to figure out what they were. No, ranking them. But they they okay. You were ranking them. The competition but was they were for, also. They, it was for English it was a tobaccos. Blind, it was a blind. Yes, it was a test. competition for English tobaccos, and they had about ten different tobaccos, and you were encouraged to help yourself. Now there was some signage there that I think they were telling you, please don't fill fill bags of it right now. A bowl of flavor. Yep, but 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 uh, they had a list that you could then check off which of the of the no name tobaccos, the numbered tobaccos you preferred. Right. In the end, a winner was chosen. And then the tobacco was open for anybody. You know, if you like number two and number two wasn't the winner, then go fill a bag of number yeah. two. Ooh, yeah. that didn't sound good. Oh. <laughs> no, that that come that came later. Um, but that was one of those things that that was a simple, simple element that was um, it encouraged intermingling with yeah. other part other. Um, You'd meet people, the people that were there, and you're smoking, and you're saying, "Hey, which one are you? Which one are you smoking? Right. And which one have you enjoyed?" I've and got right off the bat. You had something to talk about, sure. and and the people that then blended those tobaccos were were working their way around the room and asking, <clears throat> "So, what did you like? Okay, you said you liked number seven. What'd you like about that? Right. You know, I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, um, we we met uh, Russ Olette there. He was he gave us. Quite a conversation about uh, they were launching at that show, the Missouri Mirisham Blends. And so we were really curious to know what would make a pipe tobacco specific to a, a, corn, cob. a corn cob. And uh, we, we got to spend some time there with um, uh, Phil, Phil Morgan from mm-hmm. uh, Missouri Mirisham. And then <coughs> a load of YouTubers, right? There mm-hmm. had to be 20 or more people that are va- very active YouTubers that we got to hang out with. There was the room crawl, again, on the first night that people just opened their rooms up if they had something to share, and they, they just had their pipes or tobacco laid out on the beds and on the tables. And uh, Boy went along with a group of guys and uh, just had a really fun time. Vendors then, vendors hanging out in their rooms. That, you know Before they, they sell their pipes on the show floor, They've got them out, just laying on their beds. You go into rooms, they're, they're drinking and just hanging out. And, and just most of these rooms, most of the vendor rooms were all on one or two floors. And so you just kind of go around this square hotel room floor in like every other room almost. You just kind of pop I in, mean, peek your head in the door. If you've ever, ever been to a trade show... It's pretty much understood that almost every big player at a trade show has got something special hidden away. It's back behind the curtains. It's inside their conference room. It's uh, it's in a hotel room that's separate from what they're showing. And to have this part of it totally open to the public 
as a kind of a pre-show event was was really brilliant. Um, and then there were there were all kinds of neat discussions. There was a thing on uh, pipe smoking in the movies that was really really interesting. The video. Well, yeah, the, and and the guy that that's putting this video together as a, ultimately a a documentary shared that and talked about each clip and how he found it and what was in it and. Uh, that was a lot of fun to watch. And then the show itself was just huge. Still a blend of things from manufacturers, from the right. pipe to the tobacco to importers from, uh, there was a guy that had a huge table full of, of actual Meerschaum pipes. Missouri Meerschaum was on display there. Uh, there were some Japanese pipe manufacturers that had some cool, cool stuff. Carbon fiber. Um, there were uh, some pipe pipe stores that actually brought a good portion of their show of their store into the show um mm-hmm. one of them is e- yvonne reese which a lot of folks say ewan but the wobble u is pronounced as a v he was a german immigrant so it's yvonne reese um and you know what i'm a word guy even though i mispronounce a lot of words um, i try my best to learn how things are pronounced since i would normally mispronounce them um uh, Personal pet peeve right now is half the people that have smoked hearth and home tobaccos call it hearth. They look at the word and the way it's spelled looks like hearth. But the hearth on your fireplace is spelled the same way. It's hearth. The the hearth on your fire, fireplace is spelled the same way as the hearth on your fireplace? Yes, exactly the same spelling. It's hearth and home. But I digress, as I often do. Um so that show, was I like. A I prefer to call it Hearth and Homie. And so drastically different than Nashville, which was really focused on the artists, from the carvers to the music. Now, some of that was frustrating. If you didn't want to be in the the space with the professional carvers, and what I mean by that is they're there conducting business. Once you've seen it and decided whether you're going to buy or not buy. You don't want to be hanging out right there uh, among these carvers. You move on. Well, then you move over to the tent where the music is, and you can't Which is carry, the hangout tent. And you can't carry on a conversation. It was so loud. So there's where I think Chicago gets the advantage, right? Chicago didn't have the the uh, the independent carvers to the degree that they had there in uh, Nashville. It's it's so, hard. It's hard to it's hard to compare the two. Um, yeah, it, there were independent carvers at Chicago. Yes, it wasn't all independent carvers, or predominantly even. Um, Chicago had some cool th- things. There were some vendors there that were just collectors. I just had their huge collection, their personal collection, their, their private stash there on sale, um, and that was cool. But you know, it's it's hard to compare. One of the, the things that's really fun about Chicago is the duration of it that it's several days long you go you know people get rooms in the hotel you have a lot of time to hang out we've said before the thing that we enjoy the most about going to the shows because we're not we're not high-end collectors we're not going to buy all the pipes and we have many thanks to, to many of you a collection of tobacco we've had opportunities because of this channel through this channel to try more tobacco than we ever would left to our own devices. Yeah. Um, thanks to your generosity. And, um, so, you know, that's not, we're not big tobacco fiends either. He likes one cue. I smoke what's available. You know, we're not often looking for that one thing or that next thing. We we didn't walk away from the show <clears> with <throat> more than I don't know maybe a, maybe maybe a pound of tobacco all total, and much of that was stuff that was given to us. Right, one mm-hmm. of the big sponsors there was Sutliff, and we got a lot of Sutliff tobacco. Um, but again, <clears throat> <sighs> but what was fun about that show is that it was a couple of days long. They had a huge tent. That was noisy because there was activity, not noisy because there was a band screaming in your ear the whole time. And it was big enough that that they had a Q&A session at one point. That was a lot of fun. You could, if you were sitting in the corner where the Q&A was going down, you could hear it. If you weren't sitting there, it didn't bother you. Right. 
Um, and so that was just, it was a lot of fun to have an opportunity to kick back with with. What could they have done YouTubers. better? What could the venue have done better in your mind than what they did? I have one thought that, that I, I wish they could have done better with. You think of anything? All right. Tell me your thought. Here's my thought. Um, I don't drink alcohol, and that was almost all that was available. They did have a bar where folks could buy beer and, I'm sure, other alcoholic Mm -hmm. beverages. But that wasn't convenient, a convenient way for a guy like me to get a drink. Also... They did have a vending machine. Yes, they did. And and they also didn't have, like, an ongoing concession where right. if you wanted a pizza, if you wanted a hot dog, if you wanted something like that, that wasn't out out in the tent area, right. the smoking area. They didn't, didn't have, have something that. that was going on kind Inside, of beyond. way around the corner. Yeah. But that is so minuscule. Yeah. And you know what? We actually enjoyed being able to slip away. We, we went, went, ran across the street and had Culver's one day. We went down and had... Uh, um, Chino's. We had Gino's Pizza, which we brought some of that back to the tent. Mm-hmm. We had um, the what's the uh, the Italian beef that we had there? The Italian beef. It was the Italian beef. Gosh, why can I not remember the name? I don't know. Um, the Italian beef. Yeah. Gosh, I don't know. Starts with a P and adds with it ends was, with a delicious. It was it was nice. It was nice that it was such a big open space that we were able to. Um, we fe- everyone felt comfortable bringing their own food, their own drink, right. their own outside stuff into it, and it was a big enough space that we were able to do a live show from there, which was was really stinking cool for us to to have the technology to to have a live YouTube video where people were able to interact yeah. while it was happening, all streaming on uh, through my cell phone hot, as a hotspot. That's phenomenal to me, yeah. Um, and that was that was a cool experience for us, just on the Portillos, Marco Men's Breakfast Club sign, Portillos. Side. <coughs> so I guess uh, last thoughts on this as we wrap this up, and in, in kind of advice or suggestions for you. Uh, don't feel like you can't can't step away because uh, you can get in and out of that smoking tent twenty four hours a day, beginning on. It may even be Thursday, Mm -hmm, but for sure, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there's always some folks to hang out with and talk to. Don't be afraid to strike up a conversation. I know that there are some folks that might be intimidating. I mean, there's going to be some big hitters if you are a YouTuber or a YouTube fan. But don't worry, we won't be there. But you know what? Those those guys are just great people. And strike up a conversation, and it can begin with, hey, enjoy your stuff. And I've watched a number of your videos, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, and light your pipe and hang out for a while with them, you know? Any, anything else? No. I guess probably the best advice is, you know, if uh, if you want to actually touch and feel and see your pipes before you buy them, uh, it's the perfect place to do that. And so, you know, if you're going to buy a pipe, go ahead and bring your cash or your charge card with you because... Uh, there's a lot of opportunities to buy some stuff, including tampers. Haven't seen anything posted on tampon.com. Still reviewing. It's a long process. Tamponreviews.com. Is that what it is? I don't know. I think I, I, think I own both. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I own both. Uh, All right. Hey. Keep, um, keep calm and tampon. Thanksgiving Day, my opinion of that is it is too dry. Um, I didn't, I just didn't enjoy that. And, and then at the point where I, you, know, you may have seen me struggling with it, it's gone. It yeah. Just, it, it burned down gone. to nothing. So. Cause it's too dry. I'll dry that. So out. the lesson is store your tobacco the right way. Yeah. <clears throat> Good lesson there. All right. We're gonna wrap it up. Enjoy the show. Hey, do us a favor. If you've watched this long and you're at the show, if you're using social media, use the hashtag MMB club. That way we can kind of vicariously know that you're thinking about us, you know. Um, we're we're mostly Instagram guys, but we both follow some things on Twitter. Uh, I am at Aristocob at uh, on Twitter. Don't I'm at Seth Markwood. Don't abuse the hashtag MMB Club. No butt pictures, please. 
Unless there's bacon. Should we give a name? Because we know we know who we're thinking of here. Well, unless there's unless there's ba- uh, bacon and eggs, then it's fine. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great time at the show, and uh, we look forward to seeing your posts on social media and uh, do your best to to promote this healthy activity so that uh, it only gets better. All right, make it a great week, and we'll see you again next week. Bye, guys.